Hey, this is Jacob from Edify. This video is going to cover just a few key functions in MusicQuest Lesson Composer that are in the other videos, but that are really, really special and can help uh, you create amazing lessons. So just wanted to give them an extra look in this video series so that you knew that you could use them in your own lessons. The first one is, uh, you can see in task one, I've written a melody here. Uh, we have these drop downs out of the chords. If you long press, where you can then choose the exact pitches that you want for the various parts. So let's say that I'm going to put a bass part in here, but I actually want to have a G in another octave, or instead of a G, I'd like to see, have an A flat. I can set those, and now I'm going to have those pitches for my bass guitar. You can see the A flat there, you can see the G there, and if we play that, that G is going to be too high for a bass part. We can go back in, we can switch it, put it back in the second octave that's more reasonable, maybe G flat, and hit done. There is a reset there button there. You can see you can do it for either measure uh, or bar. And so this functionality is really powerful. It does take some work, but it allows you to write uh, very specific pieces of music, use more flats and sharps, and um, very powerful. So definitely don't neglect the uh, pitch selection functionality, and I'll finish out this bass line here. Another thing you can do is bring your students in with the notes filled out already. So let's say that I really knew what I was doing, and I was writing a very intentional piece of music, and they'd written the melody, and then I wanted to make a point with my bass line. I selected my pitch. Now, instead of putting them in the driver's seat for creating these notes, by double tapping, and not just creating a selection note, but by double tapping, I've now made sure that the notes will be present when they come in. So that could be um, sitting alongside my voiceover and another great capacity here. You can see we have a new taskbar. The ones in the first four videos was uh, still a little ugly. This is refined and beautiful and it works great. And uh, this is just one example of the improvements that we're constantly making to this platform. I'm gonna save my new baseline and then show you a few more things here. That should be good. Let's go to task three. So now on task three, I've done uh, something pretty interesting. I've done two things. The first thing is I've wiped the pre-existing suggestion notes. I got rid of the notes that I'd added in task one and task two because I wanted my learners to start fresh. In addition to wiping the suggestion notes, I also uh, reset user content. So I got rid of the old suggestions and I got rid of the old notes. And that means that we're gonna come into this task fresh with just the notes that I've created here on behalf of my students. Why don't we actually go take a look at how this runs so we can see these functions in action. Task one is straight ahead, just adding a melody, nothing special. And I don't have voiceovers on this lesson, it's just for demonstration purposes. Now you can see the baseline has come in immediately. Doesn't need to be filled out, right? I've done that as a lesson creator for my students and it's playing the pitches that I selected. Next task. All those lessons, all those, excuse me, notes from the prior tasks are gone. So you can really uh, get dynamic in lessons because you can have students build up one type of song, make one type of point, and then reset and wipe and move into a complementary point or doing the same sort of um, instruction with a different type of song. And that's really quite cool. The next step also cool is replication where now you've asked your students to basically re replicate what was in the first measure now in the second measure. So you can see it's the same chord pattern and instead of needing to necessarily put all those notes in as the lesson creator, I can use our replication settings here, far side on the tab, where I'm which measures am I replicating, which parts am I replicating, and of course, you need to be able to toggle this on to get that to work. But what this means is if you've built a complicated piece of music and now you want the learner to add another measure or you want to add another measure and then adjust it, 
right? Let's say it's the same um, fundamentals, but we're going to do a new ha- melody. You can take melody off. All of your notes will copy over, and then you can write a new melody piece as the lesson creator. So replication, also a really strong function. One last one here to show you is in our next task, which is task five. Let's get there. Go into edit mode here. You'll see I now have rhythm validation on. So instead of telling the user exactly where to put a note, I've given them an area in which they can place a note and sort of dictated where it needs to be rhythmically. I can turn rhythm validation on using this little toggle right here. Uh, it's easy to edit rhythm validation. If I click in the front, it'll disappear. If I click and tap, I can set a new one. So let's see what this looks like in action for the students. Uh, but it's really quite a powerful way to enable creativity because you can help them rhythmically and you can still guide the creation of the song without dictating the exact pitch. Uh, so as a student here, I'm going to come into this task and I have to write a note this long, right? Otherwise it won't complete, but I can write it at any pitch to satisfy the conditions of the lesson. So rhythm validation, again, a really powerful function in a lot of different educational sort of goals and settings. You get there through the taskbar, accessed by this toggle here. The last thing to remind you of is that you do have notation settings available as well. So if you want your students operating within the staff, you can make that decision or with note heads or note names on. If I put these on and then save and preview, As a learner now, I'm being brought in on the staff. So same rhythm validation, right? But I can see my clefts, I can see my lines and spaces, and, excuse me, it's a really powerful way to be able to uh, integrate notation and integrate notational learning into a lesson as a creator. So a few different things we covered here from wiping to bringing notes in on behalf of users, selecting pitches, re replication validation if you're trying to copy over a large number of notes or make a song much longer, rhythm validation, and notation. And uh, these are some particularly special features in Music Quest Lesson Composer when it comes to creating high quality lessons for students. Thanks so much for watching and we're really excited to see how you put these into action.